Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I want to talk about Destiny. Now that I've logged over a hundred hours in this game since it came out, I've played a ton of PvP. I've played all the way through pretty much all the PvE content in the game. I've got lots of high level guns. I've got multiple characters at high ranks so I can play a lot of the end game content from multiple perspectives. There's a lot of cool things, a lot of things that I really, really love about this game, but there's also a lot of things that I'm really upset about. Let's start off with the PvE aspect of this game. And for those of you not too familiar with MMO terminology, PvE means player versus environment. So basically fighting monsters and running missions and that kind of stuff, not fighting other players. Now in the weeks following Destiny's launch, Bungie has released some exclusive timed content. So for a week we were doing the Queen's Wrath, and this week we're going to be doing something called Iron Banner. Now they've kind of advertised these things, made them look really cool, people have gotten excited, everybody logs on as soon as the content opens up, and then we play it. Now the first one that occurred was the Queen's Wrath, and based on the description of it, it seemed like perhaps we might get some new missions or something like that involving the Queen's storyline and learning more about the Reef and what's going on with the actual Destiny in the universe. Unfortunately, nothing really happened. In the tower, an area opened up, you saw the queen ship, and you could basically get new missions from the bounty guy, and the missions were basically just rehashed versions of the same missions that were already in the game. Nothing new, you're still playing the exact same storyline content. There was some queen's armor that you could win, but it was just reskinned armor that was already in the game. And after playing the queen's wrath for a while, it became pretty clear that we weren't actually getting any new content with these timed events, but rather just reskin content that was already in the game. Really, really lazy on Bungie's part, and frankly, some pretty devious advertising in my opinion, because they definitely portrayed it as if there might be something new to look forward to in the game, but there wasn't really anything new. The next timed event is the Iron Banner, and that's currently going on, and this was going to be an exciting PvP event where basically all your armor stats added up and all your weapon damage stats added up and did the correct amount of damage in PvP. So if you had amazing gear, you should be able to basically wreck people that didn't have amazing gear. So this was going to be kind of the high level PvP, where lots of people who played a lot, had really high end gear, would face off against each other, sort of prove themselves in the Crucible. And this sounded really cool and really appealing to me. The first thing I noticed is that nothing really seemed to be different. Uh, I played it a bit and some of the footage here is actually from the Iron Banner, and my guns were doing the exact same damage in Iron Banner as they were doing in the normal PvP, so it didn't really seem like your armor rating or your attack rating made any difference whatsoever. Now I didn't do enough research to confirm or deny whether or not this was actually making a difference in the game, but I definitely did see a lot of people posting the same kind of things on Reddit and saying, hey, I'm using pretty low level guns here. They seem to be dropping people at the exact same rate as my high level guns. Now if you play enough of this Iron Banner and gain enough reputation, eventually you'll win some new shaders and you can get one new piece of armor, at least that's perfect purchasable from the vendor and the armor looks cool but it is again kind of reskinned armor that already exists in the game and the stats aren't particularly impressive like I personally wouldn't use any of the class items that are available to win from the Iron Banner which is really weird considering that it's supposed to be sort of a high level PvP event yet the gear that they're offering is all pretty crappy. So when you take a step back from all the fluffy Iron Banner advertising and you actually see what kind of content is being offered in the Iron Banner it's not Nothing. It's absolutely nothing new. You're playing the exact same maps, the exact same game modes, which is Control. That's the only game mode you can play in Iron Banner. And you're winning, what, one piece of gear and a new armor shader that was advertised for like months in advance and everybody was getting all excited about? It's nothing here. It's amazing advertising on Bungie's part because they got a lot of media and publicity from basically very, very little work and very, very little new content. Now granted, this is not like paid for DLC, so I shouldn't expect to get like a lot of really cool new content, but just the way it's advertised seemed like we would be getting something new in the game when in fact we're pretty much just getting rebranded game modes and rebranded experiences that we've already had. And let's not ignore the fact that there's a major flaw in the Iron Banner where if your team doesn't win a match, you gain zero reputation. So there's no point in sticking around to the end of the game. Everybody seems to be just quitting out if their team doesn't look like it's going to win. So you get all these games that start off good and intense and then all of a sudden one team drops out completely and the round just pretty much ends because the team realized they weren't going to win. There was three minutes left and they were just way too far down in score. So everybody just bailed. 
and this is a pretty big oversight on Bungie's part. They should have seen that coming. And to further compound this problem, because winning is now so freaking important to gaining reputation in the Iron Banner, basically people are just entering the Iron Banner with pre-made teams of six players and winning every single game in a row. If you join as a random into Iron Banner, your chances of winning are extremely low. The first time I played Iron Banner, I kept getting matched up against a bunch of pre-made teams and my team was always a bunch of randoms and we lost hard every single time and gained zero reputation. Which brings me to my next topic. The matchmaking in PvP Destiny is pretty bad. First of all, they don't allow you to actually set up a custom competitive game. Say there's a rival clan Plan you want to play against or you want to organize a tournament, currently there is actually no way to try and play a competitive game against another team. It's all just kind of random matchmaking. This is bad from both the team's perspective and a random player's perspective. If you're on a team, you're probably going to want to play against another team for the actual competition. It's much more fun when you have a chance of losing the game. When you're a random player, you probably want to play against a bunch of other randomly made teams that are not quite so well organized, so you still have a much more equal chance of winning and losing as opposed to just losing every single game over and over. Now despite that, PvP is still my favorite part of Destiny right now. I think there's a lot of really good and engaging mechanics of it, and I think it has a lot of potential. One of the interesting things about it is that certain gear can actually give you quite a benefit in PvP, and I thought I might dislike this feature just because it does offer the potential for imbalance in the game, but it also gives you something to strive for to try and really fine tune your character and make them play even better. And I'm liking it overall, except that a lot of the gear that you need and want to do well in PvP is not attainable through PvP, or the chances of you getting it through PvP are very, very unlikely. So if you want to do better in PvP, you have to spend a lot of time in the PvE aspect of the game doing extremely menial tasks. For example, you can actually get some good legendary armor through PvP, but if you want to upgrade that legendary armor, you're going to have to spend a lot of time doing PvE, doing chest runs, basically picking plants for the kind of materials that you need to upgrade this armor. It's extremely menial and time consuming and really boring, so it's like you want to enjoy PvP more? Go do this really boring task. And I was hoping that the two worlds could uh, kind of live separate from each other, that you could get all the gear that you wanted just from playing PvP, and that some of the upgrade materials that you need to upgrade your armor would drop at the end of each round in PvP and allow you to get the materials and assets that you need rather than farming the game world. In addition to that, the Crucible vendor who sells gear that you can buy with points you get from playing PvP sells gear that's not particularly great for PvP, and some of the best PvP gear that you can buy from the vendors is actually available from the Vanguard vendor who only sells gear that you can buy with PvE points. So basically there's an assault rifle called, say, the Shadow Price right now, and that one's a very good PvP gun, but if you want it, you have to do a lot of PvE missions to get it. So they haven't done a very good job of balancing out the guns to fall more in line with the style of gameplay that you're going to be playing to get them. It's also pretty clear right now that Bungie thought strength was going to be a valuable stat in Destiny. Unfortunately, everybody's really going for intellect and discipline so they can reduce the cooldown on their super abilities and their grenades. Melee is just not as important in this game in terms of having a good cooldown speed on here. So there's a lot of gear in the game, especially PvP gear that has tons of strength stats that most people just don't want. And they should definitely look into perhaps upgrading the strength stat in the game to have additional attributes like maybe increase your armor rating a little bit or something like that just so more people were actually interested in obtaining it. Now when it comes to PvP balance and stuff like that there are tons of arguments going on right now about overpowered supers or overpowered classes or this gun being better than that gun but one of the main things I wanted to focus on was just super abilities in general and how they feel like they're inescapable in many situations. And this is basically just a situation of never being able to know if your opponent has a super that is charged up and ready, and if you should get ready to react to that. So it leaves you in a lot of situations where you think you're about to get the jump on somebody in close quarters with a shotgun, and then they just pop their super, kill you instantly, and there's like zero defense that you have against this. I think it would be kind of neat if they added something into the game to warn you if your opponent had a super charged up and ready. Perhaps make the player glow a little bit or have some sort of aura around them just to give you an idea of, oh look, this guy's packing a punch, he could actually end me at any time, maybe I should keep my distance. Now another area that is certainly one of the most important and something that I've talked about before, but the netcode is still 
awful. It is just god awful. Worst I've ever seen in any first person shooter. And Bungie absolutely has to address it if they have any plans of making this a competitive or even tournament based shooter. Now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about the light system in Destiny and why I think it is just a huge problem and flaw with the game design. They're trying to do something kind of unique here. Everybody could level up to level 20 based on skill and killing monsters and then from there level 21 to 30 you basically had to get light from gear that you find or earn in the game and that will bump up your level rating and allow you to run higher level missions and stuff like that. The problem with having your level directly tied to gear that you get from random drops is that if you're playing with say your best friend and you've been ranking up at the same time and you're like we're gonna play every mission together and do everything at the same time if your friend gets all these awesome drops and you don't which is going to happen I guarantee you all of a sudden they progress way faster than you in the end game they can run the higher level missions and get way better gear much faster than you based on RNG. This is a really, really big problem with the game because one simple piece of gear can be the difference between you being completely useless in a mission or 100% effective. And I mean this like in raids and some of the level 28 missions. If you're level 27 and you're trying to do a level 28 nightfall, you're really just not going to be very effective at all. You're going to be doing way less damage um, and you're going to be taking way more damage. And this is all based on just one piece of armor that could randomly drop. So it really starts to separate the player base in the late game and it's very frustrating and aggravating for a lot of people who just want to play with their friends but their friends got some good drops and they didn't so now their friends are all doing the high level stuff and they're kind of stuck down below waiting for their cool lucky drops to bump them up to those higher levels. Comparing this to any traditional MMO where your rank is based on your experience and how much you play the game and how many bad guys you've killed and stuff like that, you can still run the higher level raids but you still might not have as good a gear as your friends but you're not going to be completely ineffective you're just not going to be able to do quite as much damage as them as opposed to being completely dead weight in addition to that since light determines your level at a higher level light rating is pretty much all that you're interested in so you're going to be putting on armor and gear later game that perhaps isn't even as good as your current gear in terms of what stats and benefits it provides but you're going to have to wear it because it bumps you up to a higher level which is kind of silly in my opinion unfortunately I I can't think of any good ways to fix the light system. It's so integrated to the way that Destiny is designed that I think we're just going to be stuck with it forever and just have to deal with the fact that your level and how good you're going to be in any sort of the PvE content is going to be mostly based on a luck system, which if you're like me, it should infuriate you. Now despite this long rant about Destiny and all the issues I'm having with the game, I would not have sunk over 100 hours into the game already if I was not enjoying myself, at least part of the game. I really enjoy the PvP aspect of the game, much less the PvE aspect, especially the grinding element to the game. The raids are fun, for sure, but to get ready to actually be able to do the raids, you have to do so much grinding and so much drudgery just to get there. That's the part I don't like. Certainly it's very integral to MMOs, but you know what? I'm a first person shooter gamer. I don't want to have to do busy work just to have fun. So anyway, I'm still hopelessly addicted to this game and I'm going to keep playing it and keep making videos on it. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.